Hello, crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I put together my first set of cards using the June 2024 sheet load of cards printable. Yesterday, I stopped by to tell you how you could download it for free, so make sure if you haven't done that already to check out the debut video linked in that description box below. Today, I'll be showing the process and giving you some tips along the way. Also today, my team of collaborators will be joining me and sharing their sets. To see what my YouTube team created, check out the playlist at the end of this video or linked in the description box below. To see what the Instagram team created, there is a link as well to the hashtag over there. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. And don't forget about our June 2024 guest artist. You got introduced to her yesterday, and today she'll be sharing her set here on YouTube. Speaking of sharing sets, if you want to share your sheet load of cards, I do have a video linked below that gives you the guidelines how to do that. You can share here on YouTube, over on Instagram, in the Facebook group, or send in a card for the end of the month video. If you do share online, make sure to use the hashtags that are at the top of page one. In yesterday's video, I talked about the main supplies I'll be using today. I will go over that briefly during the process and tell you about any other products and tools that I am using. As always though, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Before I get to the process, I did want to stop by with a couple special channel member shout outs. I would like to say thank you and welcome to my newest paper trimmer level members, Natasha Youngs and Natasha. Thank you both so much for your support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members who keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, check out the join button beneath this video or the link in the description box below. I'm going to get started by cutting my pattern papers and all of mine came from the not too shabby Rustic Blooms paper pad. Now you could choose two of the same patterns or do like I did here and choose two different pairs to go together. All four pieces will be cut the same way following the cutting guides page. To get started, I'm going to cut each piece in two sections that are three inches tall. Now, if your pattern paper does have a direction, make sure to keep that in mind. For instance, my butterflies did, so I rotated it before I made the cut. Then I'm going to take the top half and cut it in half for two three inch squares. Now, if you refer back to the printable, this is part of the special instructions. Eventually, this will be cut into three pieces, but for now, we're just going to leave it as a square. On the bottom, I'm going to cut this piece to five and a quarter inches wide, which leaves a nice little scrap that I'll use later on the insides to make this a no scrap template. Once that's cut to the width, I'm going to cut this in half the height at one and a half inches. So I have two pattern paper B strips and two pattern paper A squares from each paper. I cut the rest of the pattern papers in the same exact way, making sure to set aside that small scrap for decorating the insides later. Now I'm going to show you how to cut CS1, which is two sheets of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, cut into eight total pieces that are five and a quarter by four. Now don't forget, you don't need to remember any dimensions because you can download the free printable. Just check out yesterday's video. To get started, I cut each piece of cardstock into columns that are five and a quarter inches wide. Then those pieces get rotated and cut to four inches tall. Now on the printable, it does show the cardstocks being the same color, but because I used two different pairs of pattern paper, I do have two different colors for mine. Use whatever works best with your pattern papers and what you have on hand. 
Now I'm going to cut CS2, which I need one and a half sheets to get eight total of each of the pieces. Now for myself, I'm not going to be doing the same kind of sentiment as shown, but I am going to show you how to cut the cardstock just to help you out. Because the pieces at the bottom are only a half an inch tall, sometimes the guide on your trimmer might get in the way. So you're going to want to cut those strips first. So you see here I rotate my cardstock so I cut a strip that is eight and a half inches wide by a half inch tall. And you'll want two of those. And later we'll cut them down some more. Now I'm going to rotate that full, or I guess it's not quite full, sheet of cardstock back around and I'm going to cut columns that are three and a half inches wide. Now this leftover, I will actually be using that later for my sentiments since again they are a little different. Now I'm going to rotate those skinny tall strips and I'm going to cut it into three pieces that are three and a quarter inches tall. And I do that same for the next strip. Then those two strips we cut first at the bottom, the half inch tall ones, each of those get cut into three pieces that are two and three quarters inches wide. The full sheet of cardstock yields me six of each piece, so I'm going to bring in that half sheet of cardstock to get the additional two of each one. Just like with the full sheet, you'll want to cut your half inch strip first and then you're going to cut the rest of it into two pieces that are three and a half by three and a quarter. Now for me, I did decide to go ahead and cut the piece three and a quarter inches tall just so my scrap of white cardstock was bigger later for my sentiments. I now have the eight CS2As and you would go ahead and cut two more of the Bs for the sentiment, but since I'm not going to use them, I'm just going to stop cutting here. Your next step might be to cut your card bases, which you'll take four full sheets of cardstock, cut them in half and fold them in half, but I already had some landscape cards in my stash, so I just pulled those out for today's set. Now I'm going to show you how to mat your square pieces on CS2A. Just like with the printable, we are going to cut each of these squares into thirds. So we'll have three pieces that are one inch wide. Now you'll see here on my trimmer, I won't be able to close the bar and hold on to it. So I'm going to bring in some scotch removable tape and just tack that down while I make the cut. When this removes, it doesn't take off any of the pattern paper and I can keep using it for all of my cutting today. I did stack those three pieces together to make sure those are what I have when I go to mat these. Then I cut each of the remaining squares into thirds and I would just offset each little set just to make them easier later to grab. Once those were all cut, it was time to get them on their mats. So I took one little set of the pattern papers and I laid them out above the mat. Now this is a good time to make sure the pattern does flow correctly and switch it up if you need. Now I would suggest starting with the outsides first and then put in the center piece of pattern paper. So I'm going to add adhesive to the left piece and I place that on the left side of the mat, leaving about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Then I'm going to add adhesive to the right piece, do the same, but this time it goes on the right side with the eighth of an inch border all the way around. I do try to make sure they're level from each other. And then finally, add adhesive to the center piece, and I'm going to center it between the two, trying to get it as the same height as well. And you'll see here, it might not be perfect, but it looks pretty close. While I finish matting the rest of those pattern paper pieces, I wanted to recognize a few special channel members. In the month of May, I had some channel members earn their one year membership badge. Their names are now scrolling up on screen. Thank you so much to all of you for continuing to support me. I really couldn't do this without you.
Before I move on to assembling the cards any further, I did decide when I was kind of playing around with the layout that I wanted to add some texture to that background cardstock. It was just a lot of kind of open or quote unquote white space, even though it's a color cardstock. So what I'm going to do is bring in the Tailored Expressions Knock on Wood Background Stamp and I'm going to add some Tone on Tone Stamping just to give it a little more texture. I'm going to get my Misty ready so I can just set up my cardstock and my stamp one time and stamp all of the backgrounds. To hold my cardstock in place since I can't put it in one of the corners of the Misty, I added a little ATG to the back and detacked it a little with my finger. Then I'm going to remember the spot on my Misty that I placed this so that when I put the remaining cardstocks, it will be right where it needs to. Then I lay my rubber stamp down face down on that, making sure that it's going to cover all of the edges. Then it's super simple to pick it up with the door of the Misty ink it up with the coordinating ink and stamp it on there. And you'll see here, it's just a nice kind of muted texture, but it still adds a little something to that piece of cardstock. I stamped the remaining cardstocks in the same way, and I did make sure to clean my stamp very well before I moved to the yellow cardstock and ink. If I was thinking ahead of time, I probably would have done the yellow first, just in case there was a little ink left over, it wouldn't contaminate the lighter pad or show up in a different shade of the color. While I had my Misty out, I decided to stamp the sentiments, and for today's cards, I'm using Not Too Shabby's Blooming Sentiment Stamp Set, and I chose Thinking of You. I will be stamping four in the cotton candy and four in the pineapple. And all I need to do is set this up once kind of down in the lower right hand corner of the scrap. And then because the yellow is a little bit light, I do ink it up and stamp it twice just so it's easier to read. And then once that first stamping is done, all I have to do is rotate the piece of cardstock 180 degrees and I can stamp a second copy. I did the same process on all four of the scraps. I did two with yellow and two with the blue. And then I took these off camera and I die cut them with the coordinating dies. And I went ahead and added some foam sticky strips to the back to give a little dimension to the card. Now all of the pieces are ready so I can start assembling. I'm gonna put the stamped wood grain piece flat down onto the center of the front of each card base. Once those were all in place, I put pattern paper piece B onto the card front and I put it about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom so some of that background cardstock is peeking out. Then I'm going to take the opposite pattern in that same pair and add my square matted piece. Now for this it went to the left side and I tried to get it where the yellow border around it was all even. I finished off the remaining three yellow card fronts in the same way and then I put together the blue card fronts. And here's a look at all of those adhered together. Now it's time to adhere the sentiments and I felt like they didn't stand out quite enough from the background. So I tested off camera adding a little vellum oval and I thought that helped a lot. So I went ahead and cut eight total. To get these added to the card fronts, I pulled the release paper on the back of the foam strips and I tried to get these pretty straight across and in the center of that vellum oval. Luckily, I have that clear grid mat over my background, so that helped out a little. Once that was in place, I brought in my liquid glue and I added some adhesive behind where the sentiment would hide it from the front. When that was in place, I got it onto the card front, trying to get it straight across again, where kind of the square and the rectangle pattern paper piece met. I set a stamp block on the top to help it dry nicely in place and moved it off to the side while I finished putting on the rest of the sentiments. Once I had all those done, which I did finish most of them off camera, I also went ahead and used up all of my patterned paper scraps by putting just a little banner on the inside of each card. 
To finish off the cards and add a little sparkle, I brought in some diamond dots in green and blue. The green are gonna go on the butterfly pattern paper because there's some green on the leaves. And then I chose blue for the other set because there was just a little hint of blue on the floral pattern paper and I thought that would help draw it out. To adhere these, I put a trio of dots around the sentiment, let it get tacky for just a second, and then I picked up a diamond dot with my jewel picker and got it placed onto the glue dot. Once again, once these were in place, I set everything off to the side for about five minutes to dry. And here's a close up look at all of the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the June 2024 sheet load of cards printable. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit all of the collaboration team cards by using the links down in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.